morning everyone. My name is Meryl Capillas. We are here this morning to talk to you about our proposal number one that we feel is of great importance. The first project that we want to present is entitled Nabalakat City College Mobile-Based Student Electronic Handbook for Android. We are all aware that the Student Handbook is the official printed statement of rules and regulations and policies of the college. It also includes the information about the grading system and other facts related to the institution. The Student Handbook is given to the newly enrolled students and they are responsible for acquainting themselves with the contents to keep them aware about the policies pertaining to the operation of the college. Due to coronavirus pandemic, the norms have changed, especially at school. Institutes all across the world are resorting to digital platforms, so students and instructors utilize their mobile phones to keep up with the new normal. To contain the spread of the virus, distribution of printed copies of the student handbook might not be possible anymore, as Mabalaka City College is strictly implementing no face-to-face -face meetups. Facing the new normal where almost everything is in digital format, we want to take this opportunity to develop a user-friendly electronic handbook which can be browsed and read whenever possible. The purpose of this study is to help Mabalaka City College and the students to keep up with the new normal. My name is Therese. Let's take a look at the background of the study. We are already used to the traditional student handbook which is a form of a bookbind, one which is prone to tear, damage, and loss. Over the years, the problem is that students forget to bring their handbook and some have lost it. Students rarely bring their copies and only few are reading and understanding the content. Hello, my name is Sherilyn Ong and let me discuss to you the objectives of this study. FCC Student Electronic Handbook is a mobile-based application for Android that runs on an offline setting as an alternative for the printed version. It is responsive and adaptive to the screen resolution of the mobile device. It is also user-friendly with its plain and simple graphical user interface for easy navigation. The e-handbook includes text-to-speech technology whenever the student prefers hearing the content. It also contains the MCC official website and social media account links and downloadable MCC hymns on MP3 format. By this study, we can help the students to have access to the student handbook anytime, anywhere. My name is Jay Trigbao and let's have a look at the conceptual framework. The framework for the MCC student electronic handbook goes like this. Admin can update or modify the contents of the electronic handbook through API. The updated content will be uploaded to the internet which can be accessed on Android-based devices. Once a student browses the e-handbook on his or her smartphone, the Android device will run the application which is the MCC Student Electronic Handbook and will provide the student or the user requested information. Hi, my name is Jenny Marie Katakon. So, what are the scope and limitations of this study? The study covers the development of a Balakat City College mobile-based student electronic handbook as an alternative for the printed version. All of the features were pretty much covered and the objectives of the study slide. Electronic handbook is Android-based. It runs on an offline setting. It's responsive and adaptive to the screen resolution. It's user-friendly. It has text-to-speech feature. It contains the MCC official website and social media account links and downloadable MCC hymns on MP3 format. Due to design constraints, this study does not cover iOS devices. Thank you for watching. That would be all and good morning. Hello everyone. This is our proposal number two. The second project that we want to present is entitled IoT-based Store Access Control System. The safety of lives and properties have become an important issue, especially in the cities today. Some people have tendencies to steal other people's belongings, endanger the safety of lives at home for money and valuable things, in the offices, or even in the bank. Nowadays, access control systems have become necessary to overcome the security threats faced by many organizations. 
Advancements in door security were developed, which consists mainly of authentication systems such as biometrics, passwords, Bluetooth mobile devices, memory cards, smart cards, etc. The purpose of this study is to develop an IoT-based door access control system which authenticates and authorizes entry of a person. This provides efficient security to avoid trespassers and other criminal activity that involves security to a certain organization. Let's take a look at the background of the study. Access control using door security systems has been in existence in prehistoric times. The systems used then were just simple bolt and crossbars to intricate locks which were handcrafted by locksmiths. As time went by, these systems have evolved with improvements on the flaws of the previous generations. Challenges in security and safety are among the most pressing issues of modern times. Challenges such as cybercrime, terrorism, and environmental disasters impact the lives of millions across the globe. Different security systems were developed to eliminate these drawbacks of using the traditional keys and padlocks. The objective of this study is to develop an IoT-based door access control system using RFID card to easily access the door. We utilize RFID technology to provide a solution for secure access to space while keeping records of the user. This system identifies authorized users with proper credentials and restrictions for an authorized one. It can also generate reports containing the user's activities. The admin can set a period of unlock time when the door is accessed. Alarm triggers when the door is forced open or held open for too long after being unlocked. It has a keypad available as an alternative access. Another feature is that it notifies the admin of the user's activities via SMS. Let us now discuss the framework of the system. First is data collection. Second is coming up with a nice design of how the system would look like. Once the design is up, the next step is to build the prototype. After this phase, the prototype should be tested for evaluation. Once prototype testers or users give feedback, we move to the next phase which is redefining the prototype. Any changes and revisions will be done in this phase to enhance the prototype based on the user's feedback. The process will continue until the final result is reached, which is the IoT-based door access control system. Here are the scope and limitation of the study. The study covers the development of the door access control system. The system has a card reader and it is controlled by a control program embedded in a microcontroller unit. RFID card is used to allow a privileged user to access a secure keyless door. All of the features were already discussed earlier on the objective of the study slide. Unfortunately, due to design constraints, the study does not cover when an interrupted power has occurred. This would only require an interrupted power for efficient operation of the system. Thank you for letting us present our perspective for this project. That will be all. Good morning. Here is our third presentation for this evening. The third proposal is entitled IoT-based Automatic Floor Disinfecting Robot. Many inventions have developed to minimize the transmission risk associated with COVID-19, and that includes robotics. Robot is any automatically operated machine that replaces human effort, though it may not resemble human beings in appearance, but perform functions in a human-like manner. Autonomous mobile robots are playing a vital role in helping the workers on the front lines during the COVID-19 health crisis. Robotic cleaners are distinguished by their cleaning expertise like floor mapping and dry vacuum cleaning, etc. In recent years, robotic cleaners have taken major attention in robotics research due to their effectiveness in assisting humans in floor cleaning applications at homes, hotels, restaurants, offices, hospitals, workshops, warehouses, and universities. 
In this current COVID-19 outbreak, there is a national demand for deep cleaning and disinfection services. This study aims to develop an IoT-based automatic disinfecting robot that disinfects the floor by sweeping with disinfectant. This will reduce the risk of human cleaners picking up the virus from potentially contaminated areas. Traditionally, we used to clean dirty surfaces using our bare hands without knowing the risk of transferring the bacteria to our bodies. However, during this pandemic, the responses and its impacts on societies and economies around the globe can't be downplayed. Due to the highly infectious nature of coronavirus, robots can provide contact-free alternatives. The IoT-based automatic disinfecting robot is an efficient and cost-effective solution to the cleaning challenges caused by the pandemic. Let's now discuss the objectives of this study. The automatic disinfecting robot is IoT-based. It includes a rechargeable body traveling automatically on the surface to disinfect. It has replaceable sponge or scrubbers underneath the wheel that serve as sweeper of the disinfectant and obstacle detecting sensors position in front of the body to detect an obstacle located ahead of a traveling direction while carrying a disinfectant but it has also a push notification feature that would let the user know when it's time to refill or return let's take a look at the framework of the automatic floor disinfecting robot first is to gather all the information Next is to identify the software and hardware requirements needed to be used in the system. Once requirements are identified, this will be the time to create the software and also design and develop a microcontroller-based device. The next step is to integrate the microcontroller-based device to a mobile application and then construct human-computer interaction wherein we will test the system consistency and performance. User's feedback will be used in revising the prototype. The process will continue until the final result is reached, which is the IoT-based automatic floor disinfecting robot. Here are the scope and limitation of the study. The study covers the creation and development of a rechargeable automatic floor disinfecting robot which is integrated to a mobile application. The mobile app will be used to monitor the battery life and disinfectant level in the bottle. Its purpose is to sanitize floors and to minimize the exposure of cleaners or workers to infectious viruses. However, due to design constraints, the study does not include touch such as cleaning windows and walls and any higher places that the robot can reach. The disinfecting robot can run on rough or uneven surfaces but rather runs indoors on a flat surface such as the floor. As we bring our presentation to close, we thank you that we are able to present our perspective before you all. Thank you and good morning. <laughs>